Hello there, and before we get started on the Rantcast, uh, once again, just to catch up on where I will be uh, the week after this one, uh, the one after this big Thanksgiving, oh, it's Christmas forever treat that we're going to go through. Uh, November 30th, I'm going to be in Rocky Mount, Virginia, which I initially thought I was booking myself into Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Fine. Never performed in either place. Look forward to that. And then go on to Bristol, Tennessee. That'll be on uh, December 1st, December 2nd, Charlottesville, Virginia, December 3rd, back to Morgantown and then home. And then we come back and we then do the the week after that. Friday is in um, Montclair 6, Bensalem, Pennsylvania, the casino there. And uh, that's what I got for you. Uh, before I head into the ramp. And, and isn't it exciting for me to repeat these places uh, as my own sandwich board man, as I wander through the airways of the internet, uh, shouting out, yes, I'll be there. I'm coming your way. Nobody likes waking up and feeling like crap. With GhostBed, you don't need to worry about that. At GhostBed, you'll find made-in-the-USA mattresses with premium materials and backed by 20 to 25-year warranties. Plus, take your time. Take 101 nights to break it in with their sleep trial. Listeners can get 40% off all products site-wide. You can get 40% off mattresses, adjustable bases, and bedding accessories. Or get 50% off when you bundle a mattress with an adjustable base. Use promo code LEWIS at ghostbed.com forward slash LEWIS for 40% off site-wide. So this offer is for a limited time only. This could could all go horribly wrong at any minute. Hello there and welcome to the 154th episode of Lewis Black's Rancast entitled, I'm out of here. That's right. Bye, bye, bye. Uh, Just for a while. Um, It's time to move on. It's time to be out of the country as I do every year at Thanksgiving, but uh, uh, and I and I'm really uh, I, I'm actually head, resident reticent is the word I'm looking for resident reticent uh, about doing uh, uh, rancast today because I'm too lazy. I've reached the point that um, I've seen the the barn in the distance and I'm racing toward it, and I just. Uh, I, I'd, I'd like to stop and chat with you, uh, buy some wonderful clover, but no, I wish I felt it more, but, but also we've been through the same news cycle over and over and over and over and over again. Um, and, uh, you know, that we just add a little salt and pepper to it. We, I'm just really, uh, George Santos, it turns out, uh, they've got him, uh, they, the, the, the house ethics committee re- really needed to uh, to do an investigation because it wasn't obvious that this uh, what uh, essentially he had already done and it turns out that he had used the campaign funds to pay for only fans botox and hermes just for starters god knows what else now they're in an uproar the, f- the fact that he was a lying sack of shit from the very beginning didn't really bother them, and it doesn't seem to be any problem. And it, uh, the fact that it, it is in- incredibly tolerant on all of our parts that we allow someone who just makes shit up uh, to get away with it, I, there should be some sort of a, uh, like, you don't get to run again. Um, when you're caught, it's a liar, liar, pants on fire situation. And that needs to be the next amendment of the Constitution. And, and that's really it, true. I mean, truly, you make shit up. I'm, I'm watching it every fucking week. Uh, Jeff and I, uh, Jeff Stilson and I have constant arguments because he reads one set of facts somewhere and I read another set of facts somewhere else. And we need to come up with a set of fucking facts page that we can all fucking share as opposed to, well, this group really asked the question this way. I'm having an argument about how they made, wrote the question. He's telling me, how did they write the question? I don't give a shit. I'm not, I, I can't be responsible to figure out what was the how the question was written. All right? That's what news is supposed to do. Son of a bitch. And do we get anywhere through the argument? No, because we don't know uh, which of our set of facts is correct. So... That's really my Christmas present to America, the, uh, the amendment called Liar, Liar, Pants on Fire. I am not going to work out uh, what goes into the paragraphs written under that. I think that's all that needs to be said. You knew what the fuck that meant when you were five. You still know what it means. And for those of you who, 
miss that section, which probably is the whole group of people, but I think everyone knows what Liar Liar Pants on Fire is. And, and if not, let me know. Send in a rant about it. I have to get a little water because uh, my, my, my voice is getting a little gravelly because it's, it's that time of year. Yes. It, you might call it fall. I call it phlegm. It'll be interesting to see if they actually throw uh, George out of Congress. That'll be interesting. Um, Jamie Raskin, who I have a, a great deal of faith and trust in. Yeah, I do. Okay. And that does not make him a radical or me a radical or fucking anything. Okay. So zip that shit. All right. Come on already. Um, more on that in a little bit. Uh, but the uh, but he he is actually someone I don't agree with, with on this. He's the one who said we don't want to set a precedent by throwing George Santos out of Congress. But I, I think we're setting a precedent by saying that uh, that this guy who uh, did this, you know, you're not supposed to throw him out until he's guilty. I don't think once you find out he's done that, guess what? He's guilty. All right. There has to be a level of guilt uh, in terms of Congress. You don't keep a schlep around. Uh, because uh, whatever, because uh, it'll, what, I don't understand what precedent it sets. It, you know, I mean, I gather that the way in which the, the Congress is at this point, people will just make shit up and go, well, well, look, he did this. And it's what they're doing anyway. And so maybe that's the point of view he's got. I don't know. Um, I'm certainly not going to examine it this week while I'm, uh, my, uh, well, while I'm ready to take off, really. And I've got football games to watch. My fantasy teams, I, it, this is just unbelievable, <laughs> the amount of stuff I've stacked on myself here today. Uh, but it is, it is actually fun sitting here in front of you, and I am literally located on a bus in Waterbury, Connecticut, in front of the courtyard where we uh, spent the last two nights, and uh, we'll be on our way to New London. So if you can get to the past, if you have a uh, Wayback Machine, is uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle have, just that I could kind of share my aging with you. Uh, you get on that Wayback Machine and you can come see my show in New London tonight. <laughs> um, meanwhile, uh, just to, to the icing on the cake uh, is uh, Donald Trump uh, used, uh, they, they keep saying it's uh, he, what he did was he compared his political opponents to Berman. And so then they said, that's like Hitler. I, I, I it's, I don't care if it's just like him. You don't fucking, you don't say that. All right? All right? You know, I don't need a Hitler comparison for the fact that this, this jackass has got the, 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 the balls. The balls. Here's what you don't do when you're running to be the president of the United States. You do not, and I mean in any way, shape, or form, uh, refer to your opponents as uh, Berman. You don't do it. Um, it, uh, it shows a disregard for the, uh, the, 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 the humanity of the folks you're, uh, uh, you see as your enemies. Uh, we pledge to you, he said, and this is a quote, that we will root out the communists, Marxists, fascists, and the radical left thugs that live like vermin within the confines of our country. Communist. There are 12 of them, okay? Uh, Marxist, I can guarantee you, those of you who believe this bullshit, there are 27 Marxists. Uh, my friend Jeff would say they're 86, and then I'm sure there's someone else who'll say they're 112. They're not enough to matter, okay? Marxists and communists, okay? And they're kind of the same. <laughs> And then there'll be an argument, well, the Marxists really were a little more uh, clear on, you know, there was a little more humanity to the Marxists. It, it does, I don't give a fuck. There aren't enough to fucking worry about. Word of referred to as vermin, okay? Fascists. Yep, well, I mean, hello, hello, hello. And if I have to explain this to you, um, then you miss the first part of this, which is called referring to your opponents as vermin, all right? That's kind of a bit of fascism, okay? That's kind of from the fascist playbook. Not Hitler's playbook, the fascist playbook. And then there's the radical left thugs who were, I can't remember the name, the one that they yell about, the, uh, the group up in, uh, in Portland, the ones who wander around those, uh, the ones who are supposedly the uh, Antifa, 
Yeah. There's how many of those do you think there are? It's spectacular that the folks who live in this country listen to that shit. They can go out in the neighborhood, they can wander around, and they can't find any of these people. I can guarantee you, you're going to walk down uh, in uh, in a variety of I can guarantee you, I could leave Waterbury, go door to door and say, are you a fascist? You a communist? And I can guarantee the people who are fascists and communists and, uh, and uh, radical left thugs would be glad to tell me they are. And you know how many there are? They're not enough for him to... to to be fucking yelling and screaming about them, that they're hiding out. Vermin, go fuck yourself. I mean it. It's, it's enough is fucking enough. I'm so tired of it that there are no adults in the party who just go, you know, you have to stop this, all right? Or I'm going to be uh, unable to support you, and, and he's going to win. All righty. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, but I am, uh, as I do every year, uh, leaving the country. Uh, I do this, I've done this for, uh, God knows, it must be 20 years now with my friend Neil Mazzella. We did it uh, starting back when we had gone to his mother's place years and years and years ago for a Thanksgiving meal. It took forever to get there. And when we got there, uh, uh, the turkey was not good, much like my mother's turkey. I'd already stopped going home to see my parents at Thanksgiving. My mother didn't want to cook a turkey. And uh, we, so we, I would go home occasionally as kind of like, okay, I'm coming home from school, but then we might go out to eat. I might go to a friend's house. I might go to see my, my friend uh, Ray. His mother made an unbelievable turkey. And, and it was really when I was young, the first one who introduced me to the concept that there was a thing called gravy and that I might really... I uh, want to spend the rest of my life uh, in a bathtub filled with it. Uh, and, uh, and so um, uh, it is, is, is that holiday kind of morphed in, into a, just a combo platter with Christmas? It became less important to, uh, to get back at that time to, to see mom and dad, and certainly less important in terms of the, uh, the state of my stomach. Uh, uh, my mother really never enjoyed cooking. And, uh, and then when we... We went over to um, Neil's, Neil's mom's place. We, there was always a constant, like, which of our mothers could, could, cooked worse. That, the turkey did it, and then she had a, there was a roll that, from a great place. Uh, in, we were in Staten Island. It was a pepperoni roll. And uh, she did something that, we, you know, to kind of like, I guess, take her over the top a little in terms of my mother. She burnt the bottom of it. At that point, we made a conscious decision that we would get out of the country every Thanksgiving because there was no reason to stay here anymore. We were not going to spend the time with our families, and we were certainly not going to spend the time uh, watching the, basically turkeys being destroyed. And so that was what we did. And the, the other great joy, and I've said it time and again, if you want Christmas to seem like a saner holiday, then you get out of here. Get out of this country. Because I'll tell you, though, that, you know, um, Thanksgiving is just an extension of Christmas. It makes Christmas seem twice as long, three times really, as you, you are pounded and pounded by commercials during those football games. And I will miss them, uh, but I may be seeing them. I can't. They're later on in the day there, out there. And this year it's London I'm going to, and into the countryside actually. Uh, and so I'm excited about that. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. I see a couple of plays that my friend Neil is uh, building the sets for. And uh, looking forward to spending time with him and his lovely wife, Machiko. And that's really my life at this point. And I've, I've mentioned <laughs> uh, Neil in my book, so I don't think he's going to be upset that I'm mentioning his name now. And uh, I will take one moment to wrap things up with an incredible couple of pieces uh, from the week. Okay. Here's some, here's some news that won't come as a shock. Uh, Mississippi, it turns out, is the most stressed out state in the union. Okay? Not New York, not Los Angeles. According to the American Psychological Association, yep, Mississippi, most stressed out state, offsetting uh, the co lowest cost of living in the nation. Mississippi has the highest burden of money-related stress and the lowest average credit score. There's a shocker, huh? And then they were holding, uh, holding the, the 
the welfare payments up, you know, not welfare. They were holding up the Medicare payments. They were not gonna, interested in the feds helping them out. Perfect. Uh, also, um, reports that the heirs of the late uh, Italian Prime Minister Sil- Silvio Ber- Berlusconi have no idea what to do with his huge collection of terrible art. He, this guy bought 25,000 paintings and they have an estimated average value of $800. Now, I don't know if that it's the way in which that sentence is written. I'm wondering, I guess each painting has an $800 value. Or maybe it's 800 bucks for the whole pile of shit. And he bought many of those from late night TV auctions. Unbelievable. The prime minister of Italy, 25,000 paintings, 800 bucks a piece. And there. So for any of you who have felt badly, purchasing a Chia pet that didn't really work out for you or whatever it was when you were watching late night TV thinking, boy, I'm shit faced. I need that. Um, You can feel a little bit better now, better buying something that you thought was useful than a shitty painting. I want to wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving um, or whatever we want to start to call it. And maybe we just drop it out and call it uh, Christmas begins. And then on uh, the day after Christmas, we call Christmas ends. Whatever you want to do, I don't really care because I'm out of here. <laughs> and I really hope you all have a delightful time and uh, and that the, you enjoy the games. Enjoy your family. And maybe a little less yelling and screaming at each other. Maybe a little less liquor around the table. No, no, go ahead. Okay, because that's what this is all about. Drink up, you know, enjoy. Have the best of times. And uh, see you when I get back. Take care of each other because that's really what counts. Look, there's really a lot of stuff that I hate in this world, but I know it's why you listen to this podcast, right? I mean, maybe you agree, maybe you don't. But I know one thing that everybody hates, and that's bad sleep. Maybe you're lying in bed just trying to get to sleep in the first place, or maybe you're a hot sleeper, so you're waking up dripping in sweat. That's why I'm glad to partner with Ghostbed. They're a family-owned company, and they've been around for 20 years, so they know what they're doing. They don't just slap together mattresses like some of these other companies. No, they actually take the time to make a high-quality, made-in-the-USA mattress that's going to help you get the sleep you deserve, and it's going to last. If you're a hot sleeper, you'll want to check out the Ghost Bed Lux, which is dubbed the coolest mattress in the world. Try out your mattress for 101 nights with their sleep trial. Shipping is free, and most orders ship within 24 hours of checking out. Listeners can get 40% off all products site-wide. You can get 40% off mattresses, adjustable bases, and bedding accessories. Or get 50% off when you bundle a mattress with an adjustable base. Use promo code LEWIS at ghostbed.com forward slash LEWIS at 40% off site-wide. Limited time only. Here we go. This one uh, rolls in from Elliot. Not so much a rant, but a story and a fine one. Like every good story, this one begins and ends with the legend himself. Please. <laughs> Lewis Black. This adventure is the tale that is told about every year. As it is the story of how my dad and I almost got arrested the first time. I've titled it, A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to Lewis. Before I take you on this ride, I bestow it upon myself to paint you a picture of the man this story is about. Because, well, it's fucking funny. My dad grew up in the great state of North Dakota as a Lutheran, which is Catholic light, in a family with a litter of seven children in total. There were many lectures of bread bags during winter months being used to keep socks dry and threats of powdered milk to keep us young ones in line. Growing up in a severely conservative state, as well as preferring cock over cooch and trying to hide it, has made this man particularly vigilant in everyday situations. I introduced him to comedy in the early 2000s in hopes of getting him out of his shell. Thanks to LimeWire, get fucked bear share, I managed to acquire the best of you. From Al Roker, that fat fuck to it could be zebra come, we don't know. I slowly got him addicted to laughter. Fast forward to early 2014, we are in Scottsdale. Picture it, hot sun, tequila, street tacos. And for me, because I'm a goddamn adult, 
weed. We are walking to our first ever live comedy show featuring our favorite Lewis motherfucking black in beyond. I'm beyond elated. I light up that joint and we continue to strut along until as if Dolly Parton lost one of her implants and is rolling down a hill. My father seems to have defied all laws of science and is what we say now straight tripping. This motherfucker, born in 1954, by the way, had skedaddled like a villain in a Scooby-Doo skit. Nothing left but his glasses hanging midair. I heard a bunch of words, but only one stood out. Cops. Okay, Dad, calm down. They're just driving away from us. Huh? Why are you being a sketchball? His nerves retreat, and I'm able to tame his anxiety for now. Meanwhile, I'm smoking this doobie. It's almost out. And we aren't far from the venue when I hear my dad screaming my name. So I do what every child does and ignore the fuck out of him. Eventually, I turn around to find two cops manhandling my dad, and my attitude goes from chill to protect dad at all costs. The pigs immediately start drilling him, who we are and how we know each other, why we are there. Although my dad has the right to remain silent, he lacks the fucking will. So I step in to answer the questions. You out here smoking weed with your daughter? I happily chimed in. No, sir, I am smoking weed with my dad. Not impressed with my answer, I smile as the other cop is looking around for evidence. At one point, they had my dad shoved against the wall as if he was hiding a machete somewhere. They never found evidence. We had They had no warrants. So we shook their hands as proper villains do and walked away free men. We made it to your show in time for me to fetch him libations for his anxiety. Yes, I smoked before the show. No arrests have been made. Nobody makes memories like you and I. Thanks, Dad. I love you. It's very nice, Elliot, with both those L's and both those T's. Very nice. Thanks for sharing that with us. It's kind of a good Father's Day read, but we're miles away from But Every day's Father's Day. Huh? I caught that in time. Here comes one to us. Uh, <clears throat> here comes one from B.J. Terry. I believe I've read one by him before, but I never know if I've just seen that name before. Because I read a lot of these. A lot. I am finding as I get older, I realize that the internet is way too fucking much useless information. And it's truly affecting our youth. When I was in school, my damn information came from encyclopedias. And because of this, they had to narrow the information to actually useful, important shit. I have learned this from my younger grandson, who is 13, that the internet is the devil's playground of useless shit to overfill their brains. Proof is we are standing in line at church to receive communion. When this smartass leans up to ask, how many pieces of bread make up a whole Jesus? What the hell is this shit? Now, totally confused and creeped out, I asked him where the fuck he got that. He found it during his search on the internet. It was a math problem that some sick bastard did and says it takes over 150,000 pieces of bread and five gallons of juice. To teach him a lesson about how ridiculous this shit was, I made him tell the pastor, who's in his 30s, and he didn't tell him how damn inappropriate it was, but began to discuss and debate the figures the site used to get the fucking results. That's the moment I realized I was obviously too old. I don't know, Mr. BJ, if that is your name. <laughs> Mr. Terry, I don't know if you're too old. Maybe you're just a little too smart for them. I mean, who? The, that's unbelievable. And a, an insane math problem. How is that a math problem? I like the fact that the, the the pastor popped off with his own decision about that in the numbers. Thanks for sending that along. Nothing I like better than a math problem about Jesus. Oh, you Christians. Here we go. She wishes to remain anonymous, and rightfully so. And uh, a rant uh, that is, well... I think she needed to get this off her chest, and I'm glad she shared it. 
for those of you out there who who think that the world has changed. Oh, boy. Always amazing that this kind of shit continues to occur uh, out there. Um, and I'm glad she shared it with us and got it off her chest because it's important. You can't let this stuff fester. And this sh- stuff's got to stop. I'm a female and work as a mechanical drafter in a male-dominated industry. I get paid fairly low compared to average, but I'm in a small company, so it's to be expected. I, however, have found out on three separate occasions now that my coworkers doing similar work are making a full fucking 30% more than me, even though we are doing similar tasks. A post for another person on our team was put up. The, they offered salary for someone doing essentially the same job at me as me, and they were offering a full 20000 more than what they were paying me. Needless to say, I'm pissed, rightfully so. I'm constantly told my position is unique and, and, and valuable to the company. Apparently, it's not valuable enough to pay me an equal wage. All I want is equal pay equal work. And apparently, that's too much to ask for. It's just beyond belief that we go through this. And more women I saw the other night are going to college. It's unbelievable. They'll go to college to then come out and get jobs, which they will be paid less for and which they have more training for. It's it's just got to stop. I mean, it's just got to stop. We live in a different world now. You might have gotten away and you did for a long time. Well, you know, he's the one who works and he should, whatever, hoo-hoo, blap, blap, blap. No. I'm sorry you had to remain anonymous. I'm sorry they're not paying you properly. Constantly told my position is unique and valuable to the company. Well, obviously not enough. Someday, and I hope it's soon for you. Unbelievable, 20K more. That's like literally a portion of a year's salary, if not for, for many people, a year's salary this week wander through this age of inflation and nonsense. God, thank you, Anonymous. From David H., while Michigan has turned into a blue stronghold in the last few years, thanks to ballot initiatives, strengthening voting, abortion, and of course, weed rights, we still have some of the dumbest motherfuckers walking the planet today. A county away, some dipshit accused Midland schools of kowtowing to LGBTQ advocates by putting litter boxes in class in a classroom so kids who identify as cats can take a shit. The Michigan GOP loved this so much that they took it and ran with it until every GOP talking head in the country was bemoaning the furry invasion overwhelming our schools today. I considered a long-winded diatribe over Michigan's GOP's descent into madness and the drooling militia cosplayers that keep it afloat. But I mostly just want to express how much I hate these dumb fucks. I hate their values. I hate their hats. I hate their flagpoles with the stupid fucking snake flag and the cheap-ass Trump 2020 flags that started to biodegrade before the election was even called. I wait with bated breath to see what other loser bullshit they conjure up to try to lose the 2026 election by 15 points instead of 30. I want to see that Looney Tunes ass Christine Christine Caramos in 2026 on TV screaming to God for an answer to why Michiganders voted for the cat communist instead of her good democracy loving Christian friend Ava Goebbels Duke, who ran on the moderate platform of executing newly pregnant women to stop them from getting abortions. That is that, David, that's, that's not just psychotic. That's, that's beyond psychotic. That's straight jacketable. If nothing else, I just want them all to shut the fuck up and maybe read a book. No, not that one. No, well, David, I think all things considered, and uh, you kept your anger in check and weren't, Really, uh, could have been. I think with what you're coming, what's coming, or what they're doing there, you might have really gone off the the deep end with what you were with what you had to scream about. You 
Very, very disappointing. <laughs> I admire you for that. This is unbelievable. I do not know, uh, and I'm glad that I don't know Christine Caramos or uh, Ava Goebbels. And I did talk about this and, uh, when, I, when I was up in Michigan about how, how many lunatics you have out in the woods there. Take care. Keep it to yourself. Don't yell at them when you see one of those those uh, flags in biodegradable form. A rant from Sean Anonymous. Uh, my rant will probably cause a lot of people some rage. You never know anymore, Sean. You never know. I think it's absolutely fucking ridiculous people feel they are like they are entitled to bring their dogs everywhere. I work at a grocery store part-time. The amount of people who bring their dogs into the store is insane. Just yesterday, someone had their dog in the store, and the dog decided to take a shit. I know this wasn't a service dog, because even I know they are smarter than a lot of people in America and won't take a shit in the middle of the store. I'm not ranting because I'm anti-dog. I had a boxer for 11 years, okay? I'm ranting because why the fuck do you need to bring your non-service dog into a grocery store restaurant that has food people are going to eat, and you really need to ask a business if they allow dogs. I am totally in support of service dogs because they do help people. And as a theater goer, they are so well behaved, you don't even know they are there. Just for fuck's sake, leave your dog at home or in the car, all right? With the windows open, of course. Have a good one, Lewis. And Thanks for taking the time to read this, and thank you, Sean, <laughs> anonymous, for taking the time to write it, and you're absolutely correct. It's insane. It was after 9-11. It just got, uh, my dogs are my children. And now, I mean, how many ads can you see for, uh, for fresh dog food? I mean, I think it's probably better for the dog, but in this rant brought to you by the farmer's dog. Thanks, Sean. From Barry Yates. I ran about aging, and I will tell you, Barry, uh, full disclosure, I, the last, uh, since I've hit the road again, since I've hit 75, uh, I have been uh, talking about uh, what you talk about here. And so, uh, uh, but I felt it was important for you to have it to have it read. I think it was important that it be read. And um, I, uh, and it, we, we obviously uh, crossed, from here to there from time to time. So if you see my act and go, boy, he took it from my, no, I didn't. I can show you. <laughs> I don't need to steal, not at this point. And not at 75, I can't remember. Most of this stuff, uh, you know, about aging is pretty much gonna be the same. Cause why? Well, it's, as you say, but we'll get to it. Dear Lewis, after watching your many rant casts, I came to realize just how many rants I had in me. The number appears to be absolutely staggering. This one, I believe most all of your senior citizen viewers will raise a slightly unstable hand in agreement. Last May, I turned 70 and had an epiphany. Oh, you're a young man. <laughs> Getting old really fucking sucks. Now, don't get me wrong. Every morning, I open my eyes and realize I'm still amongst the living. I take pause. It's a nice warm feeling for the most part until I reflect on how many goddamn times I had to get up to pee last night. Sweet Jesus, give me a fucking break for God's sake. And yes, I was hoping that mentioning Jesus and God in the same sentence might help, but it never does. I do occasionally ponder the idea of slapping on a pair of Depends and letting her rip, but I defer. It also annoys the fuck out of me when folks of my age claim, I feel better than I did in my 20s or 30s. Really? So you, were you doing a hard time as big bitch on Rikers then? Is that it? Give me a fucking break. That's what I talk about my act. <laughs> that, those folks in their 20s, Barry. I mean, the folks who talk about, oh boy, I'm, this is so much better than my, you know, are you shitting me? Best years of my life is what they say. Fucking idiots. Uh-uh. Not even close. So what are my goals at this stage in my life, you ask? It's to solely 
spend more Social Security money than I put in during my working life. Take that, you worthless, scum-sucking congressional maggots. Some days I pop Advil's like Skittles. And remember the glory days when I could walk without all of those disturbing cracking noises. Now before your viewers collectively chant, what a grouchy, flaming asshole this guy is. Fair enough, but I still find joy in life. Some people have their Orioles to cheer on, which is fantastic. I, on the other hand, had my Yankees, who dropped a hot steaming load this summer. Lucky me. Actually, lucky me, Barry. That was one of the great summers of my life. Uh, not, not better than any of my 20s when they actually were, were winning uh, pennants right and left, I believe. But I'll always have next year, and that's the key to life and my point here. I will truly believe that up until the day the Grin Marika knocks on my door, instead of accepting my fate, asking him in for some Bud Light, they're cheap now, I'll simply say, Barry moved to a place in Florida called Mar-a-Lago three weeks ago. Here's the address. I can't miss him. He's a big fat fucker with an orange complexion. I figured with the way the airlines are literally flying blind these days, I've brought myself at least a couple of weeks. Enjoy the many days you have left. I know I will, in spite of my damn Yankees. Wait, did I just hear a knock at the door? Fuck me. Well, I hope you didn't, Barry. I hope you get to live to be 75 and realize just how pumped you'll be. That's when it really starts to feel so much better than your 20s. You'll be so surprised. You'll probably get up, maybe jog for a while, maybe two, three miles, you know, and, uh, There'll be all sorts of things. You'll be playing basketball again. Um, and uh, sex, your sex life will be off the charts, Barry. Wouldn't worry about a thing. <laughs> Thank you for that. And uh, I look forward to your reaction to my, my yelling and screaming about it. Certainly is something else. Best years of my life. <laughs> 70s of the best. It's fucking unbelievable. People are fucking nuts, Barry. Thanks to all of you for listening to my Rantcast. If you have a rant you want to get off your chest, send it in to me at lewisblack.com forward slash live. You can think of it as therapy or whatever you want to think of it as. Just let it rip. And I want to thank the true stars of our show, the ranters and the splendid rants they gave us. Lewis Black's Rantcast was created and hosted by me. Aha, Lewis Black. Our live rant audio was produced by James Salter. Our theme song by Chris Lane. Executive producer, Ben Brew. Executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly for the Laugh Button Podcast.